Welcome back to the Astroform channel and thanks for tuning in. In this particular video I just wanted to explain how I tried to collimate my classical Cassegrain, uh, in my case an 8 inch F12 telescope surface classical Cassegrain. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So let me give you a little bit of a background story here for those of you who are not following my channel. If you want to follow my channel by the way, click on that subscribe button, the red subscribe button. Uh, about two months ago I bought this awesome classical Cassegrain telescope from Telescope Service in Germany. And I was really looking forward to get into some planetary imaging. And um, yeah, all of my followers, they also asked, hey, when are you going to share some nice results of the, uh, yeah, of the moon and the planets? Um, and the main reason for that is that uh, the scope arrived out of collimation. And uh, by now, I think I spent four <laughs> very frustrating nights in trying to figure out how to collimate this classical Cassegrain. And I think there are two reasons for this. So first of all, I've always, be, I've always been using refractors. So this is the first time I'm working with a classical Cassegrain or a Newtonian type of telescope. So I had to get into that learning curve on how to collimate a telescope. And second of all, there's a lot of information on the internet on how to collimate a Smith Cassegrain telescope. But I think for a classical Cassegrain, it works a little bit differently. So hopefully this video is also useful for those of you who are considering to buy a classical Cassegrain but are a little bit afraid about the collimation procedure. Um, yeah, so without further ado, let me just show you what I did, what kind of steps I took to collimate this telescope. So let me just quickly show you what kind of tools that I've been using and it's pretty straightforward actually. So with this telescope I bought this Cheshire piece. This is a Cheshire piece that is especially um, useful to uh, collimate classical Cassegrain telescopes. So I will put a link in the video description below if you're interested in that. Um, and actually I've just been using some Allen screws, so three Allen screws, so unfortunately the screws that you need to adjust the secondary mirror, the size of those uh, screws are a little bit different as compared to the size uh, of the screws you need to adjust the primary mirror. So uh, yeah, those are the tools that I've been using and uh, now let's get into that collimation procedure. So when you want to align or realign the secondary mirror, all you need to do is use an Allen key and you'll have to work with these screws. So one on top, and these two on the bottom. What you need to do then is loosen up one screw and really make very minor adjustments. Loosen up one and immediately tighten the other two screws. So this is very important when you loosen one or two screws without tightening the other two. Eventually your secondary mirror will become a bit loose so you will not be able to reach focus. So again, what you need to do when you want to adjust your, your secondary mirror, make a small adjustment by loosening up one uh, screw here and immediately, immediately tighten the other two. So let's move on to adjusting the primary mirror. So the way to adjust your primary mirror if needed is that you have to work with six screws that are on the back of your classical Cassegrain telescope. So you can see here you have a smaller screw and a bigger screw right here. So one, two. On the right hand side you also have two, so that's four, one, two. And at the bottom you have another two of those. So six in total. And for so if for some reason you need to adjust your primary mirror because it's out of alignment, you first need to loosen up the three little screws. They are called locking screws. So you just have to loosen them up using a small uh, Allen key like I show you here. So just loosen up these three uh, small Allen keys, the locking screws basically. And then you can make adjustments using a, a, a bigger Allen key 
to each of the three bigger screws. They are actually called the adjustment screws. So make very minor changes to each of these screws until you're satisfied with the positioning of your primary mirror. And now that I've explained to you how you can technically adjust the primary and the secondary mirror, let me get into the actual collimation procedure itself. So when starting your collimation procedure, the first thing you'll do is to take your Cheshire eyepiece and put it in your telescope in the ring and of course tighten this screw. Do not tighten it too much, but just the eyepiece needs to be snug, needs to be fixed here. And okay, that's it. Of course, the second thing to do then is to look through your Cheshire eyepiece <laughs> and I will do my best to show you what that looks like. So I'm doing my best here to accurately capture the view you will be getting when looking through your eyepiece. Uh, I hope this works out and the first thing you'll need to check is whether or not the black donut, you see a little small black donut in the center of your field of view. You have to check whether or not this black circle is actually in the center of the circle. So you might notice that this black donut is a little bit towards the left or the right or up or down. And this is actually an indication that your secondary mirror needs collimation, needs to be realigned. So the way to adjust your secondary mirror is actually to adjust these screws in front of your telescope. So you use your Allen key. And remember, when you loosen up one screw, make very minor adjustments and then tighten the other two screws right away. So you'll need to make a, a small change and then of course you're going to be looking at the uh, through the eyepiece again in order to see in which way the donut moved. And if this is in the right direction, of course you can keep on going making similar adjustments. If you'll notice that the donut is moving in the, the wrong direction, of course, then you can simply undo the change you've made and try another combination. And you have to keep going uh, just until yeah, the donut is actually in the center of the circle um, when looking through your CSR eyepiece. And when you accomplish that, you can move on to aligning the primary mirror as well. So that's next. So the second step is to check whether or not your primary mirror needs any kind of adjustment. And the way to do that is you have to look towards the outer edge of the circle um, when you're looking through your eyepiece. And when you look towards the outer edge of your circle, uh, if I'm correct, you should be seeing uh, some black concentric rings on the outer edge of the circle. And then you'll have to check whether or not the thickness of that ring is evenly distributed um, yeah, across the edges of this circle. So for instance, if you'll notice that uh, the black line towards the edge for instance on top of the circle is a little bit thicker as compared to the black line at the bottom of the circle. This is actually an indication that your primary mirror is a little bit out of alignment and of course the same goes for left and right so if you will notice that the concentric rings on the left side of the circle are a little bit thicker as compared to the right side again that this is an indication that your primary mirror needs a little bit of uh, adjustment. And the way to do that again is by um, yeah, first loosening up the locking screws, the three locking screws at the back of your uh, classical cassock grain. And then you're going to make very minor adjustments to each of the adjustment screws uh, just until you're satisfied um, and you'll, you will be satisfied when you see that the thickness of this, uh, these black concentric rings at the outer edge of your field of view, the thickness of those rings are exactly similar yeah, across the entire edge of the circle. So I hope I can make myself clear. So that would be the second step. And this is actually, these are actually the two th steps you can engage in during daytime to collimate your classical cassegrain. Ah. <laughs> it's really uh, hot in the Netherlands. So I'm sorry for this uh, sweaty t-shirt, but let me give you some final uh, tips here. So what I just demonstrated to you is of course, the things you can do during the day. And of course, the final check then happens during the night when you have mounted your scope on 
uh, yeah, on your mount and you uh, can take images for instance of a star field. But the first thing you can do is to slightly defocus the stars when you are aimed uh, at a particular star field and then you should actually check whether or not your stars are still round. So they are, would be out of focus but still round. If, it's, if that is not the case, if your stars are a little bit oval or worse, uh, this probably means that uh, your primary mirror still needs to be readjusted a little bit. And the second thing you can do is to find a really, really bright star, like Altair or the Nab or some other bright star, and then uh, defocus your telescope. When you have defocused uh, your telescope on that star, you should notice a black donut that uh, should be in the center of that star. If that black donut is a little bit to the side or up or down, uh, this is uh, an indication that you should actually reposition your secondary mirror. So then you're going to make very minor adjustments to your secondary mirror and refocus on that star. Um, just until you will see that that star, the black donut of that defocused star is exactly at the center of the star. And um, yeah, I would say this is an iterative process for me. I'm still learning. Uh, I've spent, uh, I think now, uh, three nights uh, trying to get my telescope collimated. And I now think I figured it out, but uh, I still need to check whether or not this is really true. So um, yeah, hope this information is, uh, is useful for you. If it is, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I would really appreciate that. And um, of course, I hope to see you again in one of my other videos. And until then, I want to wish you clear skies. Bye bye.